Morning guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Part two on the Ford Focus 200 pound cheap car challenge that has turned out to actually be a bit of a challenge in itself. There was only meant to be one part to this video. Unfortunately, it's turned out there's gonna be two. If you did miss the first part, please feel free to pop back. That is numbered part one and this will be numbered part two. So guys, yeah, yesterday this just cut out on us and the comments last night was absolutely incredible. We had absolutely hundreds and hundreds of comments. I think we're up to about 800 this morning on people suggesting or making suggestions of what they think <coughs> excuse me, might be wrong with this car. Quite a lot of people said earth on the battery, it could be that, etc guys that's that's all absolutely fine but basically i just thought i'd come straight in let you know today we are going to be trying to resolve this issue with this car i've just jumped in it this morning tried starting it glow plug light out and it is coming up now engine malfunction and the battery is running low so i'm going to get involved first of all i'm going to go through every single fuse on the car um, in the fuse box here. There is another fuse box inside the car. So I will just pop it on time lapse and I'll be going through all of them. It's really not worth me sitting here individually going through all the fuses on the video. So I'll pop you in time lapse. I'm going to go through them and then we'll go through all the ones in the car. We'll uh, get a bit of life in that battery. I'll go and grab the jump pack and then start basically investigating what is wrong with this car. As you would have all seen there guys i was just literally going through testing all the fuses and relays and everything seems to be absolutely fine i know obviously i'm going to go through each and every one of you left a, a thought of what you actually thought was wrong with the car so i am going to be going through all of those most popular ideas that people went through just to show you that i am going through the paces and checking everything out so a lot of people said diesel supply so we'll be pulling a diesel pipe off shortly a couple of people said can belt a lot of people said the wet belt but you know just to save time i am going through the basics first so i am going through all these fuses here all the relays i've checked them and they all seem to be fine i'm now going to move on to the inside of the car and for those of you that do know on these focuses i've just popped that down there's a lot of fuses in there and i am going to go ahead and check each and every one of those individually but to sit here again we are in the footwell of the car sorry in the passenger footwell of the car so there's not really anywhere for me to prop the camera so i am just going to sign off for a minute get in there check each and every one of those and then come back with an update and every one of those fuses and there's not one blown fuse everything seems to be working just as it should so we've now narrowed down that it's not either of those fuses i did just pop round here i am using the microphone again guys so hopefully there's no wind noise um i've just popped round. quite a lot of you reached out and said rob it could be the cam belt but as a rule normally when you are spinning the car over you can kind of hear if the cam belt has snapped because it'll be spinning over very fast and there'll be all sorts of noises but i've just gone ahead and took a couple of the bolts out of the cam belt cover just so that you can see in there i don't you, you can't see brilliant but the belt is not broken the belt is complete and it is spinning over absolutely fine so i'll put them bolts back in put that bottle back on the only other thing that i wanted to mention as well was now that i've put the uh jump pack on it where i was spinning it over for so long that's when it come up engine malfunction and that has now disappeared 
it was doing the alarm sound and it come up. So I think that was the fact of where I was just cranking it over for so long, flattened the battery and it's obviously thrown up a bit of a fault. So we may have to plug it in again, but I'm gonna put the screws back in the cam belt cover, get the header tank put back in there and um, then we'll start investigating the fuel side of it and make sure that we've got fuel up there because that's the next port of call, I believe. that you would have seen there guys um, on the time lapse <clears throat> if you look that's covered in diesel down there now I've cracked off, a, cracked off a couple of the injectors as well and you can see how wet that is and like that one there's a lot drier basically it's there's high pressure coming from the pump to the injectors so we have definitely got fuel coming all the way up to the injectors all the electrics all the fuses nothing's blown so i don't think it's fuel related that's not to say that the injectors are not playing up but i do know from experience if one of these injectors goes down it will throw up a fault and it will still run on the other three there is a chance that it may not but from previous experience it will run on three and one of them plays up it don't completely stop so that doesn't explain why it just cut out I mean, it could be anything. It was sat for a year. A couple of people did say, that's the reason you ended up buying it off the chap, Rob, and that's why he sold it to you. But guys, the chap I bought this car off, his wife had stopped driving. They was pensioners, and they was far from trying to deceive me. And as we know, the car was scrap money. So, and you know, he sold it to me for scrap money, and I'll give him what he, what he actually wanted for the car. So... We know that he wasn't being deceiving. It didn't have this fault when he parked it up. He said it had a flat battery and and that was it. So I will continue going through it, but I'm gonna move on now to the other thing that I've done a bit of research on. And a couple of people mentioned it in the um, comments and that is dry joints on these clocks. And that's not the first time I've heard it. I've, I've heard of it on an old transit connect so it possibly is on the focuses i'm going to get on google now do a bit of research in the forums and then obviously go and have that take that out and then go and have that inspected that's kind of the next step with not getting involved with start really ripping into the car and doing all sorts of tests on it i'd like to rule out all the simple stuff first so as usual put your comments in the comment section down below I do like to mention that throughout the video because I know that you guys do pick up on little bits and sometimes I forget to answer your questions. But guys, if I have put that little heart on there, that like, I have read your comment. Just last night, it was about 800 and I really didn't get a chance to respond to each and every one. And quite a lot of them was quite similar, obviously. A lot of people have the same idea of what the problem could be. So I'm going to whip the clocks out and then try and take it down to the local auto electrician. I'm gonna even give him a call and ask if that's something that he does a lot of and uh, we go from there. So as it turns out, this is a very, very common problem on the older Ford Focuses and some other models. I've just spoke to the auto electrician. He's far too busy, he can't do it, but he does charge about 150 to do it and he'll be able to tell just by taking them out and taking the cover off whether that is the issue. But my friend used to work at the auto electricians. I just spoke to him. He said, Rob, they are very common. I've done hundreds. They're very, very easy to do, but I can't do it until tomorrow because it's Valentine's Day and he's taking his missus out. And that's a good thing, really, because it reminded me that I'm actually going out as well. So... He is going to do this for me tomorrow morning. So today is obviously Friday, Valentine's Day. I'm not going to get this video out tonight because I don't. I want to get that part in it. 
So you'll be seeing this Saturday and then I'll be recording him repairing this cluster if it's got any damage and fingers crossed that is the answer to it. So back tomorrow. It is the next day guys, bright and early actually. 7 a.m. Sunday morning, Saturday morning. I've just got here, my friend's gonna whip him out now. He doesn't wanna be on camera. So he's gonna whip him out, take him apart. He said he's gotta take all the needles off, the front covers, etc. So as soon as we get down to that stage, I'll be able to sort of hover over the top of him with the camera and videoing him doing the repair and showing me what the damage was. He has just got this car started without even touching it. Why, you wouldn't believe it, getting inside it, banging the top of the dash and turning the key and it fired straight up. So it is pointing like that's definitely our problem. extent that he has to go to to actually take these clocks apart and there it is sitting on the bench and the problem is here those three joints there have got ring marks around them so he's going to be repairing those solder joints well, I've just asked is this definitely my problem and he said this is a very very common problem and the car will not start or it will cut out and play around due to that so we'll get that done get this put back in and see if she fires up. So how about that guys, what a turn up for the books. It's not something that I've heard of before. It was only in, when I see it online. Absolutely spot on there. Well, I am gonna leave the car running while I go head back to the yard and hopefully get a bit of life in the battery because it is quite low. I did only have it on charge for about 20 minutes yesterday, but couldn't be more happy now, guys. Absolutely brilliant. Let's head back to the yard. So guys, I'm back at the yard. I think we all know this car is never going to be a show winner. It has done 175,000 miles, but it's on the button now. The clocks are all fixed. Hopefully, it will just keep going on for its new owner. Um, I'm going to unload it. I've just been in. We've had a coffee and it has been out here running for about an hour. So hopefully, we've got quite a lot of life in the battery now. I will be checking that obviously before it goes. If it needs a good charge, then I'll, I'll just chuck it on charge. Uh, quite a lot of you last time in the little beetle video was disappointed I didn't show it. The repair with the cotton buds and the paint. There's quite a lot of chips on this car. I'm not gonna get it anywhere near perfect, but I just thought I would do a little bit of that. Just try and take the eye off some of these chips. They are quite bad. So I will try and show a bit of that on camera. Don't forget, guys, for the little sneak peeks, Instagram during the day, selfie rebuilds. And then obviously I will be putting this on there tonight. Now it is all done. So let's stop waffling on, get involved, get this car finished and ready to go today. I'm just about to get on with this and I thought I would show there is absolutely no expense spared when it comes to putting out the content for you guys. I don't want to drop the camera. So here we go. It's a little bit windy today. And this is <laughs> this is how we weight down the tripod. A couple of cable ties and the socket set. So 
So like I said, it's certainly no showstopper. But how much better does that look? It really, really does. Just take the eye off all of those chips. It just looks so much more cleaner and brighter. Sorry guys, I'm bending down to make sure I don't get no wind noise. But yeah, just a little tiny dab of paint in each of the little, uh, the little chips. And it just looks 10 times better. So that's it now. This car is ready to go, I should think. So guys, it did turn out to be the £200 bargain car that we was hoping for. So we paid £200 for the car. Sorry, it's the best bit, the price breakdown. I know it's everybody's favourite part. The car was 200 MOT was 40 I've had those clocks repaired by my friend this morning. Normally 150 he's helped me out, 50 quid. Diesel, £30, 10 are in the car, 20 in the truck. Uh, valet, £15. The um, badge got damaged when we was turning it up the right way. I deliberately didn't do that in the first video because I really wanted to see how many of you picked up on it. Um, the aerial and a couple of light bulbs that we put in it was uh, 15 quid. So we got a total of 350 and I'm gonna take offers 700 pound and above, um, try and double my money. And I think that that's a really good idea. We have had a chat and we are gonna try and do one of these every month if we can. They're not always available, the little cars, but if they are, we are gonna try and do it at every opportunity that we can. So that is something really nice to, for you guys to look forward to. I'm not gonna waffle on like I normally do, guys. I know the end bit's a bit boring for you. I wanna thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out and we really do appreciate it. Check out the merch, link is in the description. Like, subscribe and share, and we'll look forward to seeing you very soon in the next one. Thanks for watching.